Welcome to another edition of Ecosphere with me, Mary Kanu. Amid the devastating effects of climate change ranging from heat waves to wildfire, flooding and drought amongst others ravaging parts of the earth, the world celebrated Earth Day on April 22nd, an annual event set to site to demonstrate support for environmental protection now first held on April 22nd, 1970. The celebration now includes a wide range of events. The official theme for this year is invest in our planet. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres in a message to commemorate World Earth Day called on everyone to raise their voices to demand that leaders make peace with nature. Well, Guterres in his message said humanity is waging a relentless war on nature and these actions are causing biodiversity to collapse. Now do take a listen. On International Mother Earth Day, we reflect on humanity's most important relationship our relationship with the natural world. From the air we breathe, to the water we drink, to the soil that grows our food, humanity's health depends on the health of Mother Earth. Yet, we seem hell-bent on destruction. Our actions are laying waste to forests, jungles, farmland, wetlands, oceans, coral reefs, rivers, seas and lakes. Biodiversity is collapsing as one million species teeter on the brink of extinction. We must end these relentless and senseless wars on nature. We have the tools, the knowledge and the solutions. But we must pick up the pace. We need accelerated climate action with deeper, faster emission cuts to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. We also need massively scaled up investments in adaptation and resilience, particularly for the most vulnerable countries and communities we have done the least to cause the crisis. LC ecosystems from oceans and rivers to forests and prairies, are also critical in our fight against climate change. Let's get to work to implement the historic UN Biodiversity Agreement to ensure that 30% of Earth's land and water is protected by 2030. At every step, governments must lead the way, but corporations, institutions and civil society also have a vital role. Now, despite the growing acknowledgement of the importance of protecting the fragile and unique planet we live on, it appears humans are only making matters worse. The environmental crises are piling up. Climate, biodiversity, plastic pollution that reaches every corner of the earth. The growing water shortage continuous deforestation and many more ills done to modern nature. For joining me on the program for more insight into how humans can make things better for the earth is environmentalist. John Ekoko. Thank you very much for joining me on the program. Now, for, for many years now, for many years now, you know, there's been constant awareness on how to care for the earth to avoid an implosion and, you know, possible destruction. But so far, so good. Are you pleased with how the earth has turned out? No. I am not pleased. Number one, we tend to want to learn only from experience. Uh, uh, can you please relax a bit, sir? You're we tend to want to learn only Number two, we grew up with this idea that the earth cleanses itself. So we had some wasteful and harmful practices from the past that are still prevalent. We have the habit of dumping, particularly in developed countries. We, we have the habit of, um, how do I put it now? All the okay, we have waste dump, we have unregulated production, that causes contamination and pollution. We have slum dwelling with the runoff effect, water runoff. We have so many bad practices. The dumping is not only on land, also on water. I don't even know which one is worse. We have blood drainages everywhere. But at the same time, whenever there is an implosion, 
whenever there is a breakdown, we all sit up and say, ah, no, we are beginning to threaten the earth, we should do something. We do not need to wait until the system collapses. There's erosion everywhere. There's flooding everywhere. There's desertification everywhere. Of course, the um, ozone problem is there. The uh, rising sea level is there. Must we wait until the whole coastland areas are overrun by water before we know we, we, we can do something about them? We have not done enough. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. Up till today, if you are going on the road, you still see people throwing waste out of their cars onto the road. You still see construction blocking water marked areas. You still see crowded settlements with a lot of cement work. Of course, about manufacturing, do I need to talk about it? With the effort of our environmental protection agencies, there is still a lot of pollution going on in our manufacturing sector, even though it is a very small part of the economy. There is still a lot that needs to be done. And if you give me the chance, I will tell you. We need to up our standards, our environmental standards. We need to enforce our rules. If we enforce the rules and people see it, old habits will begin to change. Nesria, state environmental protection agencies, all of them, they are supposed to be monitoring compliance with relevant environmental laws and uh, standards. They can do more. The waste management agencies should not see themselves as government. They should see themselves as a business and sell themselves to the citizens as customers. One thing too, our mode of environmental knowledge is very good. I, I know you serve as a lot of pollution, you know, but, you know, more and more people are talking about the earth and its depletion. And, you know, this helps to create awareness. I don't know if you agree with this, but how do we get people to understand what environmental issues are? Because not everyone understands what global warming means or ozone layer depletion. So how do we get people invested? Yeah, I said it before. Let me say it again all over the world, the state authorities set standards. They make laws and they enforce the laws. Our main problem here, we do not enforce the law. We are talking of harmony with nature. What sort of harmony can you have in a rapacious relationship when one person is raping the other? I mentioned our manufacturing um, sector. They still carry out a lot of pollution and contamination. So the question is, our environmental protection agencies, including Nesria, what type of monitoring are they doing? What type of enforcement are they doing? I don't want to talk uh, too loud, but we all know Money has changed hands, corruption. We have enough laws to make people comply. Number two, we cannot rule out the effect of enlightenment campaigns, whether on radio or on TV or using our local methods, our town criers. The social media is there. Let people see the consequence of continuing with bad behavior, they will change. I'm sure the man in the East facing horrible erosion 
if he knows that just one little change in his habit, in his attitude, will slow down erosion, he will he will do it. There's a lot of flooding in the western part of Nigeria, along the river banks also. If you let them know just a little change in their habits, it will slow down flooding. Is it not the waste that we throw down the road that we throw down in different places that blocks our drains? Is it not the uh, the shanties and the slums and the overcrowding that causes unpredictable runoff? And don't forget, the effect of runoff is not limited to the land with all the toxic materials that it carries. It goes into the sea. It threatens marine lives. Our fishes. Look at the pollution of the sea and the toxic level. And when we eat the fish from the sea, human life is threatened also. We just have to let people know. If you go by uh, Okwaba, you see, see a lot of pollution in the water. But I must concede there's some effort being made today to clean up that place a bit. But we can do much more. We have environmental protection agencies for the state and the federal. Since, since you've mentioned efforts, you know, being put in place, we know the earth is alluded to as Mother Earth. You know, Mother because of the many provisions and the care the Earth provides, but as humans, we keep taking and taking from Mother Nature. So how do we give back so that the Earth can replenish its resources and provide for us in turn? Yeah, thank you. We give back by curtailing our destructive habits, our destructive practices. Essentially, all over the world, people have actually learned by experience. But in the advanced countries, they are committed to environmental sustainability. The Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, you know, the CERCLA, the ROC, ROAs, and all of that. Even Nestria has about 33 or 45. They should collaborate with the state environmental protection agencies. We need to look at Niger Delta. It's a saw, it's an ISO. Up to today, is it gas flaring? Gas flaring should have stopped by 2010. Today, it is 2023. Why are we still having gas flaring? If the punitive sanctions in the law were applied, we will not have gas flaring today. Look at the contamination in the Niger Delta area, where the level of benzene is 900 times the permitted level. Various forms of cancer are ravaging that place. Waste dumping must stop. Let us follow our town development uh, policies. This overcrowding, this slum and uh, shanties, let us do something about them. One thing too, uh, even our dredging, It is so unscientific. Yes, they is supposed to actually increase the debt. But when they go and they dig a place, they allow the sediments to settle elsewhere. If care is not taken, it carries the toxins from one area, settles them in another area. It transfers pollution from one place to the other. It affects the habitat in that area. Many are made extinct. That's great in the room. What about the acid rain? 
our nitrogen oxides, our sulfur oxides. That one is principally from our manufacturing businesses. What about the unrestricted dumping into the waters, into adjoining lands? You see, just look around you. You don't need to look around. Uh, 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 Mr. You Koko, I, I know you have a lot of solutions to the problems we're facing in the country and, you know, in the world in general. But I must ask you just this final question before I let you go. You know, Earth Day was first celebrated in 1970. And 53 years later, we have some adults, you know, who are 53 years old and they are not environmentally conscious. You know, for someone who has been creating awareness for many years, I'm referring to you now, how then do we communicate Earth Day to little kids so be aware that we cannot do without the Earth and we need to care for the Earth? Yes. You cannot overplay the role of education, the role of enlightenment campaigns. You need slogans, both on TV or radio, and particularly now in the social media, to educate not only the kids, everybody. You need to come up with features that brings the consequences, the impacts home. Oh, 50,000 people are dying yearly. 500,000 are dying yearly from cancer, from lung problem, because of air pollution. Air pollution is caused by, you know, unrestricted emission into the air. Oh, anytime you just emit carbon, you are already causing air pollution. Oh, noise pollution is making so many people go deaf. Apart from other cardiac problems, then pass necessary laws. Fortunately for us, we are not the leaders. The advanced countries are the leaders, and they have come up with very many laws and regulations. Pass these laws. Monitor compliance, enforce compliance, and punish the violators. I can tell you a lot of things we do and get away with here. You can't try it abroad. Not in Europe and America. Even today, not in Asia. COVID came and created its own problem. But Europe and America, even Asia, they have moved on. Africa is still living in pre-COVID time. It shouldn't be. We just must put relevant laws in place. We must empower our agencies, not only to monitor, but enforce, um, enforce the laws, ensure compliance, and punish violators. You must keep politics out of environmental management. Politicians are not well educated on environmental matters. Please, they don't need to be allowed to do their work. We are appealing. It's very important. No. Well, um, I'm afraid that's how much we can take for now. But environmentalist John Ekoko, thank you very much for your many insights. All right, we'll take a break here. But when we return, the program will continue. Just stay with us. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. 
All right, welcome back. In 2022, Nigeria experienced what was described as the worst flood disaster in a decade as over 1.4 million people were displaced. Over 603 persons were killed and about 82,035 houses were damaged. Rising from this, the Director General of the National Inland Waterways Authority, George Mogalu, has revealed that the agency is taking proactive measures to open up blocked channels, essentially to avoid the unprecedented flood experience across the country last year. Mogalu gave the assurance of paying a private visit to President Muhammad Buhari at the State House of Buja, and he said the agency is carrying out a massive sensitization of the possible flood prone areas. Now, let's take a listen to what the Niba boss said. So, what we started doing proactively was first of all to start the aspect of sensitization getting people to understand because we have a department in our office that um, monitors flood flow looking at the flood plain and gives us a, money, a report on monthly basis on weekly bi-weekly basis to my office and then the department that is responsible will now develop the data which we now use to sensitize the people keep them informed of the possible uh, flood prone areas so that people will have to leave those um, locations while at the same time also, like you may be aware, I have, we have 23 area offices across the country. So what we are doing in terms of opening of blocked channels is using the, 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 the area offices across the country, identifying those areas that we have blocked channels, and then within the limits of our own resources and capability, we start opening them up so that they can have free flow of, um, of water. Even floating debris are all being removed at various locations across the entire country. As we identify them, we do the basic survey, and once we identify them, we set the process in motion to remove them. We're doing some now as we keep identifying them. And you know these things like water high cell, like wrecks, like floating debris, are not fixed items that you will say, I will remove now and it won't be there again. You can remove a wreck tomorrow, and by next tomorrow, another wreck will come. What are these wrecks? Broken down vessels that are condemned, logs and what have you. So as we identify them using survey, do we get, identify the coordinates. The next thing we do is to set in motion the process of removing them. As we speak, procurement processes have been concluded and some are being removed. While as we identify, we set in motion the process of removing them. We see them as a challenge and we are attacking them. Well, how best can Nigeria avert another flooding disaster? I'm now joined on the program by Jamoke Omorgeha, an environmentalist. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, we know the federal government, you know, has said uh, it is taking proactive measures to avoid another disaster by carrying out sensitization and opening up block channels. But well, is this really enough to reduce the levels of expected floods in the country? Well, I would say it's not enough, but though it is a good step in the right direction, though it is not enough to stop the, the level of flood in the country, the government needs to do more. And there's more to be done by the government. The government has to take some proactive steps yeah, to stop uh, flooding in the country. And what are some of the steps that the, the government needs to take? There should be proper uh, management of land use due to urbanization. Uh, there should be proper drainage system and there should be afforestation and reafforestation to, to mitigate the effect of climate change. The construction of an embankment and floodplain wall should also be there to reduce the impact of flood in the country. Expanding of the channels, the silting of drains, proper waste uh, disposal and uh, methods, and prohibiting building of floodplains. These are some of the uh, perhaps steps that the government needs to put in place. It's not just expanding the channels that will uh, reduce the flood. Though it's a right step in uh, it's, it's a good step in the right uh, direction, but that's not enough to reduce flood. Oh, all right. You. Now, with, with these mitigation methods that you've mentioned, you witnessed the levels of floods and you know the destruction that took place in 2022. If these mitigation methods are put in place, do you see Nigeria not recording any losses at all this year to flooding? Uh, well, well, I would say if the mitigation uh, methods are adequately put in place, if you only reduce the flooding, you 
you cannot eradicate flood. You can only reduce flood to a minimal level. And that's uh, and and by so doing, you reduce the losses. That's the solution. It, it can only mi minimize it. Some believe global warming and ozone layer depletion are conspiracy theories. And so we see some Nigerians carrying out indiscriminate dumping of waste and you know other activities that affect the environment and in turn the earth so would you agree with an enforcement of laws and punishments you know just to prevent the recurring issues of blocked channels and drainages yes there should be punishment there should be enforcement of laws nobody is above the law if you pollute the environment you need to be punished and that is the polluter pay principle. You need to pay for your pollution. And there's this widespread uh, concern that the ozone layer is being uh, depleted. Nigeria is facing, we are facing serious uh, global uh, uh, pro problem due to the depletion of the ozone layer, causing uh, uh, global warming and climate change. Most of the uh, uh, flooding we have in uh, Nigeria is as a result of human activities that we call and anthropogenic causes is due to our careless attitude we, we we have a lot to do in the environment we have a role to play in the environment the modern earth revolves because of our attitude and these are the reasons for some of the disasters we have like flooding hurricanes cyclones it's because of the way we treat our uh, mother earth and the mother earth is revolting so literally, there's in this, the, the gutters that are yeah, suffocated, there's a uh, littering everywhere. We, people are careless. We don't care about the environment. We need to sustain this environment for few, uh, for our generations yet unborn. So nobody's above the law. I, law, I say it again. There should be laws and punishments for pollution of the environment. Thank you. Well, all right now, Jumoke Omoria, an environmentalist, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. All right. Well, that's our program. Thank you for watching. I am Mary Kanu.